Hello, welcome to Disconnected. This is a follow-on on the previous video where um, it was debated if Britain should pay reparations. So this is uh, a video by Politics Joe and it is regarding Richard Drax, the MP for South Dorset, um, <laughs> a modern-day feudal lord Apparently, he was, Richard Drax was one of the original, um, one of the first slave owners. And it is hilarious. Uh, so, uh, uh, an estate owner in Barbados, one of the first to import slaves, um, living in a massive estate. Now, I'm going to play some of this, but please support Politics Joe. I think they do great work. Um, and obviously this is video is straight from them. He is MP Richard Drax's estate. He owns 2% of Dorset. He's probably the richest landowning MP. And his familial wealth is directly linked to the slave trade. Richard Drax is the Conservative MP for Dorset South. And essentially a modern day feudal lord. This is his estate, Charborough Park. It's surrounded by a three mile wall known locally as the Great Wall of Dorset. Educated at Harrow, he's been a journalist, a soldier, and now a politician the latest in a long line of Draxes to be a Dorset MP. If he sounds like a relative empire, that's because he is. His family developed and perfected the sugar plantation, bringing chattel slavery to Barbados. The key person really in the Drax family and in the history of the Caribbean, if, if it's gonna be a single person, is James Drax. He sailed out to Barbados on the first ship taking settlers to what was then a completely empty island. He arrived in 1627. Oh, by the way, this is funny because Scotland actually had <laughs> a colony. <laughs> this was it. History of uh, the Caribbean, if, if it's going to be a single person, is James Drax. He sailed out uh, to Barbados on, on the first second. ship taking settlers to what was then a complete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was their attempt at uh, Scot Scotland's attempt at colonization. Uh, I mean, no less worse in, in being horrible, but at the same time, you know, very, 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 very um, half-hearted effort at being colonialists. But, I mean, to be fair, a, a huge amount of the um, aristocracy in Scotland also ended up having... Um, estates in um, in the Caribbean and in America um, so there's all you have to do is walk through Glasgow and look at the street names and any street name that is that is uh, uh, called uh, that is named after a, a rich person in Scotland influentially rich person during the colony times um, was a direct uh, was directly made rich through uh, slavery. So um, yeah. Anyway, completely empty island. He arrived in 1627, and some 20 years later, he was the force behind the sugar revolution in Barbados. What James Drax did was establish. Um, the first successful sugar plantation. I mean, you could say that Drax was the Henry Ford of the sugar business. Crucially, he was the first person to shift from employing indentured white labor to enslaved black labor. And certainly James Drax um, was you know, certainly lived like, a, lived like a prince. Richard Drax still owns Drax Hall Estate, a large plantation which uh, his ancestors acquired centuries ago. One of Drax's ancestors wrote a handbook on how to mobilize and exploit transported Africans in order to maximize profits from the plantation economy. So he literally wrote the book on... Absolutely. The, the handbook. It is estimated that 30,000... Right, the reason this video is important is because of this weird belief that slavery is something of the past and that um, Britain was so wonderful because they were instrumental in in abolishing slavery. But the truth is that to this absolute day, the 
the people that sit in your house of lords, the unelected um, people who have influence over the laws in this country, um, the people with these massive estates all across, all the way from the south of England to the northern tip of 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 the British Isles. Um, these big estates, all the old money, um, lots of the MPs, um, people who have got money offshore, non-doms, you name it, is all an, a direct result of colonization and slavery and the profits that they made and the mass amount of wealth that they accumulated. That is why the story of slavery isn't finished. That is why there are still issues around it and why the wrongs have not yet been made right. Now, um, this is obviously a, a bit of an extreme example, but it is not the only example. And further down the video, you will hear the people of his constituency talk about him. And it is quite clear. So I'm going to show you the whole video because I obviously urge you to please watch the whole video on... Um, on politics joe but it cre it clearly shows how the mindset of these people um how they are in a big degree in charge of this country and um are still a massive problem if we want true democracy we need to get rid of these people we Britain needs to make things right and, that, and what I mean by that is like the rich need to make things right and we need to go full-on democratic we need to go we need to become a republic it is that simple the House of Lords needs to go um, and we need to go republic we need to abolish um, the royals completely and it, it, to be clear, I personally think we should be fairly radical about that and also strip them of their wealth because it is the public's wealth and many, many other countries' wealth that they sit on, that they have accumulated. Anyway, please watch the video. I'll have the links below. Um, and uh, yeah, be as annoyed as I am. Thank you.